Now, the runner-up was Hugh Green of Pittsburgh. For Rodgers, the award capped a brilliant career and a season in which he led the nation in rushing. And when you run for 1,781 yards, you need speed, which he has. You need moves. He has those, too. And it helps to have power, which Rodgers has in abundance. George Rodgers, the type of back who will out-sprint you, out-dance you, or if necessary, just flat-out bury you on his way downfield. On the other side of the line tonight, you'll see you Green, the best defensive player in the country, a model of consistency for four seasons. Tackle, sack, fumble, interception, you name it, Green will create it. Rodgers and Green, the focal points tonight. From Jacksonville, Florida, it's the 36th annual Gator Bowl with the number three ranked Pittsburgh Panthers taking on the number 18 ranked South Carolina Gamecocks. The nation's top running back facing the nation's best defensive unit. And this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet and your Chevy dealer with Chevette. Monza Citation and the new Monte Carlo Chevys up ahead for 1981. And by Prudential for life, health, auto, or home insurance. When you think about your financial security, see a Prudential agent. Get a piece of the rock Prudential insurance. Jacksonville, Florida, northeast corner of the state. Magnificent sight from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise. As you look down, 70,000 filling this venerable old bowl. And tonight, they'll be looking on a great individual matchup and a good matchup, two of the country's finest teams. It is unseasonably chilly in Florida this time of year. The game time temperature, 56 degrees. Yesterday, the high temperature was only in the 40s. The wind is diminishing. Moments ago, coming in from the west at 15 miles an hour, they'll play on natural grass tonight with a slight chance of rain, but the field in very good shape. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Michaels, and this is a bowl promoter's dream. You've got the fellas who finished one and two in the Heisman balloting, not only in the same game, but on the field at the same time. Rogers for South Carolina, Green for Pittsburgh. Also, it is a game of particular significance for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They have lost once this season, but they still have a pretty decent shot at winning the national championship. They are currently ranked third. For them to finish number one, the following would have to take place. Number one, they'd have to, of course, win here tonight, and they are favored. Number two, Thursday in the Sugar Bowl, a game you will see on ABC from New Orleans, number one ranked Georgia would have to lose to Notre Dame. That game is rated just about a toss-up. Then New Year's night in the Orange Bowl in Miami, second ranked Florida State would have to lose to Oklahoma, and Oklahoma is favored to beat the Seminoles in that one. So certainly not a pipe dream for Jackie Sherrill and the Pittsburgh Panthers as they come onto the surface at the Gator Bowl. A look at their record. They began with four consecutive wins. Their only loss of the season to Florida State in Tallahassee, 36 to 22. They bounced back from that and won six straight games, and as you can see, scored a lot of points in the process half their season, the regular season, by defeating Penn State. The final score was 14 to 9. And here come the Gamecocks of South Carolina, a team that, as you can see, lost to Southern Cal, but came back to beat Michigan and Bo Schembechler, 17 to 14. Then they lost a tough one to Georgia, 13 to 10, and went into their final regular season game with a mark of 8 and 2, bowing to Clemson in an upset, winding up the regular season with a mark of 8 wins and 3 defeats. Pitt and South Carolina, delighted to be joined tonight by the recent inductee to the College Football Hall of Fame, Ara Farsegian. Ara, when you take a look at the matchup tonight, you know you've got Rodgers and a great running attack for South Carolina, but he's going up against the nation's best defense. Can the Gamecocks afford to sit back and say, let George do it all? Well, there's no question the reason the Gamecocks are here is because of their running game. Ranked number fourth nationally, 300 yards a game. They've been terrific. But I know that Jimmy Carlin knows that there's going to be, coach of South Carolina, there's going to be eight and nine-man fronts that Pittsburgh will be throwing at him. Gary Harper, the South Carolina quarterback, must, absolutely must, complete some passes to reduce those defenses. Now, the prospects for that are not easy because he's going to be going against the number one defensive team in the nation, a team that's only given up 65 yards per game. The matchup everybody is talking about, of course, is George Rogers and Hugh Green. But Jimmy Carlin, the coach at South Carolina, says the real matchup is number 47, his tight end, Willie Scott, 6'5", 250, a real football player, and he figures that Green will be over Scott a number of times tonight. He actually is going to audibleize right at green tonight so we're going to find out early just how good the two of them are 
So that'll be strength against strength. On the other side of the coin now, you've got the pit offense, basically a passing attack against a relatively suspect South Carolina secondary. Well, I'll tell you, it's a great passing game. Procano and Marino have passed for 25 touchdowns. They go 275 yards a game, but you've got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line led by Mark May. A great offensive line. They've only given up eight sacks and 378 pass attempts. And it's going to be a big challenge for South Carolina. They have lost Perlot, their free safety. They've, had, they've lost ahead, bring another guy in at left corner. And they've had trouble in the defensive secondary where they've given up 175 yards a game. Emotionally, would Pitt have any advantage in light of the fact they are going for a possible national championship? Well, talking to both coaches, both teams are going to be up. I think Jackie Sherrill said it well. I really believe that Pittsburgh has more to lose. They're ranked number three. They're still in the hunt, as you pointed out, for the national championship. But South Carolina's got the Heisman Trophy winner out there, and that offensive line is one of going to show why he got that award. And South Carolina has never won a bowl game. So you can see the challenge there. Our ABC colleague, former Oklahoma quarterback Steve Davis, will be working the sidelines tonight. Let's get a report from the field, Steve. South Carolina quarterback may be a little bit more prominent figure than most people figured. The reason is Coach Carlin, right before the football game, told us that he anticipated an eight-man front from Pittsburgh, and if Pittsburgh gave him an eight-man front, then he would ask Gary Harper's senior quarterback to throw the football. If he was ineffective in throwing the ball, then very early in the football game, it was Coach Carlin that said probably Gordon Beckham, the sophomore that has only thrown 17 passes in 1980, probably would get the nod in the football game. So the quarterbacks may have more to do with this football game than George Rogers or Hugh Green. Al? All right, thank you, Steve. So I can imagine that the heart of one Mr. Beckham, who's thrown only 17 passes, is beating rather rapidly at this point as you take a look at tonight's officials. Robert Carpenter will be the referee and the men he will be working with from the ACC. The Gator Bowl is full. 70,000 tickets have been sold. I would say if there is partisanship in one sense here, it would be in favor of South Carolina probably because of the proximity. It is certainly a lot closer to Jacksonville is Columbia, South Carolina than would be Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So the Gamecock contention has come down in force. South Carolina making its first appearance in the Gator Bowl since 1945, the first year of the Gator Bowl. Pitt was here in 1977. They paid their last visit then, beat Clemson. Matt Cavanaugh had a tremendous night, threw for four touchdowns. So the Panthers to kick off, South Carolina to receive. The man in the middle for South Carolina is Horace Smith. And Dave Trout to kick off for the Panthers. Trout will be kicking with what was a wind of about 15 miles an hour just 10 or 15 minutes ago, but has died down now. The flags are lit, and here we go. A low line drive kick toward the corner, taken at the two-yard line by Carl West to the 20 and out to the 22 yard line where South Carolina takes over offensively. Gary Harper, the quarterback, and Gary, the key man, as Steve Davis pointed out. Johnny Wright will be the fullback, George Rogers the tailback. They normally line up in the eye, occasionally split backs. Gillespie and Horace Smith, who was the middleman on the kickoff return, will alternate at wide receiver. They are the messengers as Carlin sends in the plays from the bench. South Carolina, if you have not seen the Gamecocks before, most of the time operate out of a two tight end formation, and they think Willie Scott is the best in the country at that spot, number 47. First and 10, Carolina from the 22-yard line. That's Gillespie in motion. Rogers the tailback, and they give it to George right away, and he loses the ball at the 29-yard line, and the Pitt Panthers, let's see, have recovered. The Pitt Panthers with Tom Flynn. Number five, the free safety recovering. So a most inauspicious beginning for the Heisman Trophy winner. There was a lot of penetration here. It looks like Neil, I believe. No, it was Jackson. The linebacker blitzed, got a lot of penetration, but unfortunately for South Carolina, Rogers fumbles the ball, a tough break for the Gamecocks in the early going. So the Pitt Panthers in business at the Gamecock 29-yard line with Rick Trocano at quarterback. Artrell Hawkins getting the start at one running back spot. Number 12. And they give it to the other running back, that's McMillan. They had Hawkins in the slot, and McMillan is stopped by Ed Baxley, the linebacker, number 50. Pitt with Tricano 
who started the season at free safety. Joe McCall will see some action. He is not in there, however, right now. McMillan was the sole running back in that set with Dwight Collins at a flanker spot, number 32. A freshman, Willie Collier, the senior split end. They have Hawkins in the slot as you look at Jackie Sherrill in his fourth season at Pitt. 38-8-1, his record. Second down and eight. Hawkins in motion in Chicano with a drop. And a screen to the near side to the 32 is McMillan. He gets inside the 25 and tackled at the 22-yard line. Again, it is Ed Baxley making a stop. Up front, they are massive. Jimbo Cover to sophomore. Robert Fader, number 64, weighs in the 245. Russ Grimm, 270-pounder, was a high school and quarterback. Emil Boris at 266. Mark May, the Outland Award winner. The best interior lineman in the country, and Benji Pryor, an excellent tight end who could go in the first two rounds of the NFL draft. Third down for the Panthers at the 23-yard line, Jim Carlin, the South Carolina head coach. They put Pryor now in the slot to the left with McMillan the sole running back, and Benji goes in motion. On third and four, it's O'Connor to throw it. Good protection. Has a man at the 15-yard line. It is Benji Pryor. He is pushed back with has the first down. Ed Baxley again in on the tackle. He's made three. Defensively, Ellis Province, Weaver, Allen, and Henderson. No real standouts, but they are solid and consistent. You've seen already what Baxley can do. Cater led the team in tackles. The secondary is a bit suspect, as Aaron pointed out. They are missing their key man, Perlode, who was injured about a month and a half ago. And as a consequence, teams have been able to pass on the Gamecocks. First down at the 16-yard line. Looks like he's automatizing. Pitt, out of a two tight end setup, a flag is thrown, and a pass after the 12-yard line to Mike Dombrowski, the other tight end who was aligned opposite prior, but a marker down after Mark Bridges had made the tackle. So our first flag of the night. And it's a procedure call against the Panthers. As you look over the shoulder of Jackie Sherrill, his first head coaching experience was in Washington State in 1976 after he had served as an assistant to Johnny Majors both at Pitt and at Iowa State. And he's a man who took over, in essence, for a legend in that Majors had led the Panthers to their last national championship. Let's get the call. Illegal procedure. Why? Too many men in the backfield. Too many men in the backfield as they had lined up in a double tight end set. Now they're giving them formation distortion. The wide double wing is the thing that they want to use to look at the strong safety and key off of him and throw away from him. First down from the 21 yard line is Stefano. Throws to the end zone and no good. Intended for Willie Collier. They try to do a juggling act as he was covered by Mark Bridges on the near side. Tricano put it right on the numbers there. Collier just dropped the ball, one of the great receivers. Defensive play by Bridges. Willie Collier. Let's go to Big D, come on now. Plus 32 this season. He had six touchdowns, that would have been his seventh if he hadn't dropped the ball. Second down, 15 from the 21-yard line. No score, early first quarter. The Panthers trying to capitalize on the George Rogers fumble. Fire in motion, and Chicano with a straight drop, and then running inside the 15, gets to the 12-yard line. He's very mobile. Emmanuel Weaver made the tackle. There's no question it was a quarterback draw. He came right back to the pocket, let the rush develop, and he found a big hole in there, pre-planned, and obviously, as a result of studying film in preparation for the game. Third down and seven. The Pitt Panthers at the South Carolina 13-yard line. Again, they go with two tight ends. The sole running back is Randy McMillan, who's a good one, number 40. And too much time. Flags have been dropped before the inception of the play. It's McMillan who gets into the end zone for the touchdown. But too much time. The flags had been dropped before the snap. The play had been blown dead. And the penalty, of course, will be against the Panthers. And the South Carolina defenders, uh, hearing the whistle, uh, actually had stopped. It would not have been a score. It would have been a draw play for a few yards. 
So it's a little misleading. Of course, the whole thing is uh, set back because of the penalty. Second penalty against the Panthers. Delay of game. Why? Still third down. Second penalty against Pitt on this drive. You know, Arrow, we saw Jackie Sherrill questioning the call before with too many men in the backfield. How do you have too many men in the backfield with a double tight end set up? Well, I think he might have called it. He wasn't up on the line of scrimmage. The only way you could. Yes. It didn't appear that way from here. Third down and 12. Sopano. Throwing for Collier. Has him, and he's bumped out of bounds at the one-yard line by Bridges. A beautiful throw by Tricano. It was well defended. So Collier will go over for a New Jersey as we see the play again. He fights to the outside. You can't see right here, but Tricano puts it right in there between the defenders. Watch him try to delay Collier here. Shoving him out of bounds. Number 20, 29, Thomas. He gets right behind him before the deep defender can come over, which is number 20, Mark Bridges. He has got a first down at the one-yard line. Now they come up in the eye with McMillan, the fullback, and Archrell Hawkins, the tailback. So Hawkins in motion on first and goal. Give it to McMillan. He's punched up and pushed back. If you saw the South Carolina-Georgia game, you know how tough South Carolina is down deep. <laughs> we call that game. They did a terrific job. Cater was in there again. He played a sensational game against uh, Georgia. He's a leading tackler also with 106 involvements this year. Ball spotted inside the one. Second down goal. 11 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. First quarter. Well, in the early going here, I've been very much impressed with uh, Tricano's throwing. He has been on target. And the formation distortion has created problems for South Carolina. It's a tough place to try to adjust after a turnover. Second down, goal. Tricano to do it himself. And he's in. So the Pitt Panthers with Tricano going in right behind Russ Grimm, number 56, the center. And the Panthers capitalizing on the fumble by Rodgers moving in from the South Carolina 29 to go on top six to nothing. Well, the turnover was a key. I'll say this, South Carolina did make them go the hard way. Didn't, get, didn't give it easy. Of course, they were helped by two uh, key penalties. But as I said earlier, that Tricano can throw the football. Dave Trout to try the point after. Dan Daniels, one of the backup quarterbacks, number seven, will do the holding. So the Panthers on top, six nothing, and Trout makes it seven to nothing. Ten minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the first quarter at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville with the Panthers driving in for the score and leading seven nothing. Now comes Miller time. The flag is dropped, the race is a memory. And now you're coasting into the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, if you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller and me, if you've got the time. Economy cars. There sure are a lot of them around. But check out their sticker prices, and many don't seem quite so economical anymore. Fortunately, Chevy Chevette isn't like most economy cars, because not only does Chevette offer good gas mileage, like this, it also offers you a low Chevy price, like this. So why buy an economy car that just saves you gas when you can buy a Chevy Chevette, best-selling small car in America, and one top son of a gun? After the fumble by Rogers. The Panthers going in, 29 yards, took them seven plays, and they were set back twice with five-yard penalties. Took them 3.52 to do it, and they lead seven to nothing. Dave Trout to kick off again. As you look at Rick Tricano. Tricano, the starting quarterback as a sophomore and as a junior until he was hurt last year. Dan Marino took over. And then this year started the season at free safety and then came over, came back to the offense when Marino was hurt. West. Coming out to the 19 with it. And South Carolina will start its next set from there. First and 10, as you look at the men up front, they've got Ben Cornett anchoring the line on the left side. Chuck Slaughter is a good one. Joe Doyle out of Wilmington, North Carolina, 6'3", 240-pounder. 
Mark Austin out of Union, South Carolina. Steve Gattel making an appearance in his home state. Schechter Lee is from Pennsylvania. And Willie Scott, who Carlin contends is the best tight end in the country. And he has great hands. First and 10 from the 19-yard line. Rogers the tailback. Sweep to the right. And George gets it out to the 26-yard line. Tom Flynn, who recovered the fumble by Rogers on the first series, made the stop. The men up front don't think that Green is a one-man gang. Meisner, Boyarski, Neal, and Jackson are very, very good. Ricky, in particular, on the other side. Sinceri and Fidel, the linebackers, with White Thomas. Williamson is the man to watch in the secondary. And Flynn, number five, the free safety. Now, the entire defensive line, the down people, are all seniors. Played together for three years. Rodgers got eight, second down and two from the 27. Give it to George again. And Rodgers, out past the 30 for a first down where he stopped by Steve Fidel, number 58. I think one of the interesting things, the last two plays that George, Tom, uh, George, George Rogers has carried the ball, he has had nine-man fronts to run against, and he's made a first down. It's as if Jackie Sherrill is saying, we just dare you to pass. Go ahead and try it. That's right. Now, I think they will go to the air. I think that, as Jimmy Carlin said, he feels that they have to go to reduce those defensive fronts. Here they are again with a nine-man look. Gillespie in motion, and Harper will go to the air on first down and go deep and incomplete out at the 50-yard line where Willie Scott, the tight end, got a hand on it. But the Panthers were back there covering. Second down and 10. Carlton Williamson and Lynn Thomas in the area for Pittsburgh. Well, you know, they ha absolutely have to throw the ball to reduce that defense. It's going to be very tough for George Rogers to run against a nine-man front all night. And it's... Here's... Here's Green and Rogers, the Heisman Trophy winner, the runner-up. Here comes Green through. Look at Rogers fight him off right here. There's two great athletes. Terrific shot. Second down, 10 from the 31-yard line. Pitt leading, 7 to nothing. The up man, Wright, gets out to the 49-yard line. Johnny Wright, stopped by Carlton Williamson. Remember what uh, Jackie Sherrill said yesterday? He said, you know, they keep throwing the ball to Rogers, giving it to Rogers, and the next thing you know, boom, they give it to Wright, and he pops through there. They're looking for Rogers. Boyarski is blocked right there by the center, Mark Austin. Run right by Green right here. And here he comes, a good football player, this Johnny Wright. 86 carries for 458 yards. Been in the end zone three times. Out to the 48. First and 10, South Carolina. Off a quick count. Rogers gets into Panther territory. Tackled at the 49-yard line by Ricky Jackson, 87, and Steve Fidel, 58. George Rogers, there are his numbers for the season. They're even more impressive when you think about the fact that Rogers did not play the second half of three separate games this season. The Gamecocks blew out three opponents, and Jim Carlin, not wanting to risk injury and not wanting to run up the score, had Rogers on the bench for a full 90 minutes of action. Otherwise, he probably would have been up over 2,000. What a career average, 5.5. I tell you, he's a great runner. Second down and seven from the 49-yard line. The fake to Rogers. The pass out to the 45-yard line to Willie Scott. And he gets close to a first down to the 43 where Lynn Thomas makes the tackle. Lynn Thomas is a great football player. He's only 6 foot 182. Can you imagine the challenge he had trying to tackle Willie Scott 6'5, 250? Not the easiest chore in the world. They'll measure. Harper showed a lot of poise that time. He was under heavy pressure going back to throw, but found his man. Got the ball just got the ball up just in time. Bill Neal was the man applying the pressure. You can see they are just shy of picking up the first down. So it's third down and that much, and you would think it's going to go to Rogers. Rogers is the type of back, and we've seen them through the years, like an Earl Campbell. It doesn't look like he's getting a lot of yardage, and then you look up and he's picked up five. He's a franchise in himself. <laughs> Third and a couple of inches, and Harper will try it himself. Harper moving over his center, Austin, as they take a look at the chain now. Referee Carpenter lining it up, and it's a first down for South Carolina. There's Pitt defensively, how they rank. Number one total defense, number one against the rush giving up only 11.6 points per game. 
which is remarkable considering the fact that Florida State in one game alone scored 36 against the Panthers on a night when Pitt made a lot of mistakes. A lot of turnovers that night. Smith in motion and coming the other way now on first down from the 42, and they give it to George, and he takes it to the 40-yard line where he runs in to South and Sherry, number 66. Well, you don't get 300 yards a game and rank number four nationally uh, that's South Carolina's running game without a great offensive line and they have two great tackles in there slaughter at left tackle and Shuckley and of course Cattell and Doyle have done a great job along with the center Mark Austin Rogers has carried five times for 24 yards second down and eight from the Panther 40 Rogers tries to cut inside and gets upended at the 43-yard line is Meisner, number 86, sliced through along with Carlton Williamson, number 48. Now here's that matchup we talked about. There's number 47, Willie Scott, blocking on Green. I'll tell you, he's a massive man. He's doing a great job on him, but Meisner got a... Oh, he's doing a super job. Excellent job by Scott. But Meisner came right through number 86, made a great play. That's the type of replay you don't see very often with you, Green. That's right. <laughs> Man who's been marvelously consistent since his freshman season. Third down, 11 from the 43-yard line. Harper under pressure again. Throwing, tipped, and incomplete. Intended again for Willie Scott, number 47. And Green putting a lot of pressure on that time. Let's take a look and see why he is. Everybody's All-American. He comes right back after being blocked, putting a lot of heat on the passer. Harper right by number 36 who is right Johnny Wright trying to block him and he gets to the passer Harper and knocks him down great comeback by the All-American so Green after getting taken out makes Harper pay the price and Chris Norman averaging just over 40 yards a kick a wobbly kick and a short kick and a fair catch is called for and made up at the 21 yard line by Troy Hill 22-yard punt, 6.21 to go in the period, 7-0, Panthers. <laughs> My alternator light won't go out. Well. What do you think it is, Mr. Goodwrench? Well, let's take a look. Mr. Goodwrench has the right GM equipment available to work on your General Motors car. Thousands of dollars worth. But he also knows the value of a well-placed thumb. What's the problem? Just a stretch, Bill. I can replace it while you wait. All right! Keep that great GM feeling. Where Mr. Goodrich works. With genuine GM parts. Day on ABC. Notre Dame sets their sights on upsetting Georgia as Herschel Walker leads the number one team in the country towards a possible national championship. The Sugar Bowl live on ABC. Looking down on the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. This town really alive tonight from our Goodyear Blip Enterprise. Temperature in the low 50s. The Pitt Panthers with the ball and a 7 to nothing lead. With 6.21 to go in the first quarter. First and 10 from the 22. Tricano keeping. Turns it up and goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line. A run out there by Chuck Allen, number 74. Chuck Allen's a good football player. But the thing about that play was it a predetermined run on the part of Tricano. He's a good runner. They used that same play against Penn State with some success uh, three or four weeks ago. George Rogers. On the South Carolina bench, they've limited him to three and a half yards a carry thus far. The Panthers capitalizing on Rogers' early fumble for their touchdown. Have it second down, four at the 27. Tricano on a roll. And Rick throwing to the far side and complete out at the 39-yard line to Collins. The freshman wide receiver, Chuck Finney, sophomore out of Miami, Florida, makes the stop. Well, this is a great football player. He's got tremendous speed. 4.38 in the 40. 
21 8 and a 220. Here he just runs a turnout. You've got to give him a lot of cushion. This is the freshman, Chuck Finney, coming up, forced into the ball game because of injury. Skipper moved over to free safety because Perlot was out. And you got to give him that kind of distance. I tell you, a freshman giving a guy like, first White Collins is a freshman, but he can fly. First down, Panthers at their own 39 yard line. This is something they'll do from time to time. If you saw the Penn State game lining up in the shotgun, Tricano rolling to his left and throwing well short. Intended for Dwight Collins, who was covered well on the play by Mark Bridges, number 20. So it'll be second down and 10. I think the sweep is a right off of it, and Tricano came with his one on one coverage to the wideout. We've talked about pitch defense, as you can see on offense this season, setting records, yards passing. Average yards passing per game. Dan Marino, of course, who started the season as quarterback, an outstanding passer, just a sophomore, but hurt, shelved by a knee injury. And then Tricano came back from the secondary to take over. Marino, by the way, is available, is relatively healthy, could play tonight. But Ricky has the job back. Second down and 10 from the 39. Tricano with a lot of protection for Hawkins but incomplete on the far side at the 44 yard line. The pass protection has been terrific. Here you see Emmanuel Weaver number 52 the nose man for South Carolina. You see him being double teamed here by number 64 Bob Feta and the center Russ Grimm who came to the University of Pittsburgh at 212 now weighs 270. He was a quarterback now playing the nose man Talk, take a look at the block on the Emmanuel Weaver he is handled and that's why there's only been eight sacks in 11 games third down and 10 the Panthers from their own 39 yard line sending Hawkins in motion and Tricano on a roll under pressure this time and incomplete might have been tipped Chuck Allen got a hand on it number 74 the on rushing defensive lineman and so the Gamecocks after yielding a first down hold and the Panthers to kick. Would you believe that Chuck Allen has had seven pass deflections during the course of the year. That's his eight. He gets his hands up when he rushes the passer exactly what you're supposed to do. So the Panthers to boot it away. Dave Hepler who's been off and on this season as a punter averaging 37 yards a kick. Troy Thomas back deep. The rush is on. Hepler gets it away. A low line drive kick that takes a good pit bounce. And South Carolina will be pinned deep to be precise at their own 10. Gamecocks will start from there. 5-17 to go in the first period. Pitt 7. South Carolina nothing. <laughs> Don't find out about your auto insurance by accident. Ducks, ducks. Forms, forms. With a piece of the rock. Hello, Prudential. Our survey shows that even after a claim, people claim we're good. I'm covered? <sighs> Thanks, Prudential. Ducks, forms, what forms? For auto insurance, too. Give a piece of the rock. Prudential insurance. Even after a claim, people claim we're good. Tell them they go quack, quack. How's it cold tonight? Oh, don't ask. I got you some cough medicine. <laughs> but I'm also sniffling, sneezing, aching. My head is stuffy. I'm feverish, and I gotta rest. I was supposed to get a sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you could rest medicine? That's NyQuil. It relieves a cough as well as this, plus all my other symptoms. NyQuil. Would you get me some? Be right back. NyQuil. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. Jamaica, a matter of survival. An ABC News close-up, Tuesday. The Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. The 36th Gator Bowl. All began in 1945. South Carolina was here, but lost to Wake Forest. First and 10. The Gamecocks from their own 10-yard line. Pitt leading 7-0 late first quarter. Rodgers bunched up Sal Sinceri, number 66. Pushing it back. Coming up, of course, on Thursday, New Year's Day from New Orleans, the Sugar Bowl. Can Georgia maintain its number one ranking? Georgia unbeaten against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame in a game that many regard as a toss-up. The Irish coming in number seven. It begins at 2 o'clock Eastern time, Thursday, the Sugar Bowl. Second down, eight, South Carolina from its own 12. 
pitch to Rogers. Back of right block. And George puts his head down and gets out to close to the 19-yard line. About a yard and a half shy of a first down. Third down upcoming. A tough field position to work in. I'm talking about South Carolina, obviously. And they're not a big play offense. They're a team that grinds it out, and uh, they've got to work for their field position. So when that ball took a favorable bounce for Pittsburgh on the punt, it really put them in a hole down here. Jim Carlin, 101 career wins. He's been at West Virginia, Texas Tech, and now in his sixth season at South Carolina, where he also serves as the athletic director. Third down, call it two from the 18. Right in motion, pitch it to Rogers on a sweep, and he's tripped up in the backfield by Ricky Jackson, number 87. The other end, so much is said and written about you, Green, you tend to forget about 87 Jackson. Uh, and don't forget about him, a terrific football player, number one tackler on this team. You see him fight off Cornette, who's trying to block him. He keeps fighting to the outside. Rogers trying to get the outside with motion to this side. There's Jackson, gets penetration, trips him up with his right arm. Great football player. Chris Norman to kick as he stands at his own one-yard line. His last kick is 21 yards. The pressure's on, but he booms this one out toward midfield. At the 45-yard line, it's Flynn, who should have called for a fair catch, and is lucky he didn't lose the ball, and a marker is down as he gets back to the 37. Penalty should be against South Carolina, interfering with Flynn. But... There was a flag down, but it's been picked up. There is no penalty. And Pitt will have it at the 37-yard line. So no penalty on the play after a punt. And Chris Norman has not gotten off two very good punts in his first two attempts. That one was for 28 yards. And the man who's been averaging 40.6 with no blocks, that's not off to a good night, and field position is very important. But it left his foot. Looked like it had a little bit more distance. Look how it was spinning backwards. It looked like it got, uh, instead of rolling over, it just backed off. The Panthers at the 37-yard line in good field position. Again, Pittsburgh ranked number three in the country. In some polls, they were ranked on top. Sports Illustrated had Pitt favored to win the national championship this season. Had a fine year in 79. And almost everybody returned. It is a senior-dominated team. On first down from the 37-yard line, Artrell Hawkins has a hole inside the 30, inside the 25, gets to the 21-yard line. The ball comes loose, but the play had been blown dead. Hal Henderson, number 81, the defensive end, made the stop. Good running by Artrell Hawkins. Also, he gets great blocking in there. Look at that hole in there opened up by the line he does fumble the ball as he hits the ground right there but he actually gets it back let's take a look at the double team here by Feta again and Grimm look at him run Weaver out of there and of course Hawkins cuts back against that great blocking by Pittsburgh first down Pitt at the 21 yard line for kind of rolling and protected well but throwing out of bounds intended for Willie Collier Second down and 10. Two minutes, 39 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Panthers on top, 7 to nothing. One of the problems that uh, Pittsburgh has had through the year has been an abnormally high number of turnovers, about 4.5 per game. And when they play perfect, you know, that, uh, they still won 10 ball games. And that's a lot of turnovers. And sure. if they avoid them, they're really tough to stop. Extremely unusual to have that many with the offensive line, as you can see there, protecting Tricano well tonight, as they have done all season with both Tricano and Marino. Fake draw on second and 10. Tricano with a lot of time. The Pryor at the 11-yard line, and he is pushed back. Benji Pryor, number 84. His forward progress will have him relatively close to a first down. They'll put it at the 14. I'll tell you, this player is a great player. He made some great catches in the Penn State game. Here he is just running a straight down and coming across. He's wide open right there. You see Pat Bowen covering number 25. And they get the ball to him late. Tricana could have thrown the ball earlier. Walt Cater comes in and is helped by Bowen. They finally get him down with Mark Bridges. They put it back at the 14-yard line. Third down and three.
flag is thrown before the snap. Panthers have already been penalized on two occasions. Once for a legal procedure, once for delay of the game. That's the third time in four down area. Why? Still third down. Excuse me. It's the third time in four down area that they've had penalties. You just can't afford those. Their second delay penalty of the night. It's third down eight from the 19 yard line. Pittsburgh trying to capitalize on good field position after the short kick. Third and eight from the 19 yard line. McMillan, the sole running back. Collins and Collier both split to the left. They're kind of looking that way, then rolling the other way, but still looking left and throwing into the end zone and nearly intercepted. Number 20, Mark Bridges, had it but couldn't hold it on a pass intended for Willie Collier. I made a great play. Mark Bridges did a great job on that, saving the score. And Tracano also can throw that ball. Here's Collier, receiving a receiver of 32 catches this year, 537 yards. Now he sees Tracano roll away from him, so he starts working across the end zone. Bridges is staying right with him, comes in front of him right here, and could very well have intercepted this ball. Makes a great attempt. Dave Trout now with a 36-yard field goal attempt, and it's perfect. So Trout adds three more. The Panthers cashing in with a field goal, 11 to go first quarter in the Gator Bowl, pit 10, and South Carolina nothing. You don't have to be a genius to change your own oil and filter and save yourself up to 10 bucks. Valvoline Motor Oil shows you exactly how quick and easy it is with step-by-step -step change instructions on the back of Valvoline cans. It's really quite simple. Once you get the hang of it, just see for yourself, then do for yourself. No wonder more and more drivers are changing their own oil and filters and changing to Valvoline. It's a smart way to save up to 10 bananas without a lot of monkeying around. Right, Val? <laughs> It's on! What? The fight! The fight's on! Ladies and gentlemen, it's a prodigious event. It's an unparalleled cinematic achievement. It's a dramatic tour de force. Clint Eastwood in any which way you can. Rated PG. It will simply astound you. Now playing. Check newspaper for local listing. Channel 4, Pittsburgh. In the Gator Bowl, Pitt leading South Carolina 10 to nothing with a minute 11 remaining in the first quarter. Dave Trout kicking off for the Panthers. Horace Smith, the middleman, back deep for South Carolina. The kick in the direction of Smith, who feels a yard in. Out to the 5, the 10, has some room for the 20. Smith across the 25 and the 30, and dropped at the 31-yard line by Terry White. Coming up, January 10th, the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Hula Bowl from Honolulu, a game that features many of the great collegiate football stars, the seniors culminating their careers in Honolulu. In that game, interestingly enough, it'll be Green and Rogers again, but this time they'll be on the same side, both for the East. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. Johnny Wright, the fullback, picks up only one this time. Wright earlier had a big hole opening for him, but this time Steve Fidel was there to plug it up in the final minute of the first quarter. And South Carolina operating without a huddle. Hit napping, but now a long count on second down and nine, and they pitch it to Rogers. 35 to 40 and he nearly broke it as he's tackled at the 43 by Tom Flynn. Former quarterback Flynn is freshman from Verona. Here's just a pitch sweep and they get good blocking on it. Rogers gets to the scene. Does a great job. Johnny Wright gets a lead block right here. Number 36 coming here on Flynn and Flynn throws his body in there and stops the play. First and 10 from the 43 yard line for South Carolina. They give it to Rodgers again through the middle this time, but bunched up by Jerry Boyarski, number 68, amongst others. And it'll be second down and nine. Yeah, Boyarski came to Pittsburgh at 230. He is now 6'3", 284. 
Again, South Carolina up to the line quickly. Second down and eight, but time may run out, and it does before they get the playoff. So the first quarter is over. South Carolina operating without a huddle, but a long count. So the first period goes into the books with the Panthers leading 10 to nothing. Alcoa can't wait. Long before there was an energy crisis, Alcoa developed a window specifically to save energy. Beautifully designed and precisely engineered, it employs welded edge panes of insulating glass in a unique sandwich of pre-painted aluminum, rigid vinyl, and double weather stripping. The Alcoa Insulating Window, a beautiful energy saver that was ready right when America needed it most. We can't wait for tomorrow. Alcoa can't wait. Meet a revolution in menswear, the Hager washable suit. It never needs dry cleaning because even the coat's made to stand machine washing in warm water. Plus, take the tumbles of a dryer's permanent press cycle and come out looking like this. For convenience, economy, plus the comfort of magic stretch fabric. Get the Hager suit. That's not afraid of the washer. Another fine product from Hager, the official wardrobe of the Super Bowl. RCA wants you to see the right color. Does your television automatically capture all these subtle shades of red on this fiery desert of color? Color Track 1981 can. With RCA's exclusive detail processor, Color Track separates detail from color, refines it, then locks the right color on track. Even colors only subtle shades apart. Color Track 1981. RCA is making television better and better. We go to the second quarter, the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, 70,000. Looking on as South Carolina comes up to its own 45-yard line, second down, eight. Pittsburgh leading 10 to nothing. The pitcher to Reeves, who throws to the 50, and it's intercepted there. The Panthers coming up with the ball as Steve Fidel looks to lateral it and does at the 50-yard line to Sal Sinceri, the other linebacker, and the Panthers get it on the turnover. Percy Reeves was spelling Rogers at the tailback spot and throws it away. Well, George Rogers just can't throw the ball. Carlin said he cannot throw the football, and this is bad judgment right here. Percy Reeves came across to throw it. They used him to throw the football, but unfortunately it was bad judgment, and uh, you can see the turnover, how costly it is. Carlton Williamson putting the pressure on that time on the safety blitz. First down. Panthers at the 50-yard line. Hit ahead, 10 to nothing, and Tricano wasting no time. Look at that protection. Throwing and juggling and incomplete at the 30-yard line intended for Benji Pryor. Let's check in down on the field with Steve Davis. Steve? Uh, Dave, what's wrong with your ankle? Uh, I got tendonitis. I broke it uh, about a year ago, and it's just re uh, reoccurring the injury. It's not going to affect your kicking tonight, is it? I hope not. Okay, Al. All right, Steve. As Steve Davis visits with Dave Trout, the pit place kicker. Fortunately, he is a right-footed place kicker. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he made a lot of trouble. Well, Got to carry the weight on the other one, though. He yeah. can't kick with his right without that left. <laughs> He's been perfect tonight, though, with yeah, an extra sure point is. and a field goal. Second down and 10. Panthers from the 50-yard line. Ooh. And Hawkins gets smothered. Ray Rooster Jones, rather, number two. The running back stopped by Emmanuel Weaver, number 52. Let's take a look at the man that's been double teamed all night. Weaver straightens up. Russ Grimm drives him right straight back. He's mad about what has happened. One on one, he can't handle him. And look at him make the tackle on Hawkins. Mm, now, there's, there's a turnaround after being double teamed a few times. Third down and 11. Well, he just got the respect of Russ Grimm. Pittsburgh lining up in the power eye and then beginning to shift and as they do they've got another marker and the penalty against the Panthers and this will be delay the, the third delay Five. of game the third time pushing that 25 second clock it doesn't seem like it's that long but no. uh, uh, maybe they are taking that they have to be because the back judge back there is calling it he's got the clock a little buzzer on there that goes off and 
That's a third one. Jackie Sherrill wants to take it to the shop tomorrow, I think. <laughs> third down and 16 from the 44. Chicano out of a shotgun. Protected well again. Throwing over the middle and complete to the 37-yard line to Willie Collier. And that's a first down. Boy, I'm impressed to wait for Connell's throwing that football. Here from the shotgun. Let's watch him. He steps back. He gets great protection again. Weaver can't get in number 52. He steps right in and he really hums us in here. And you see Collier picking it off. A great, great job. Finney makes the tackle. All he's doing is running a straight pattern up the field, reading the zone coverage, turns inside. And here's Tricano. And here's Finney making the play, number 27. So they needed 16 and picked up 18 to the 37-yard line. First and 10. Operating from split backs this time. And down to the 30-yard line goes Hawkins. Artrell Hawkins, a senior from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Phil Ellis made the stop. Well, here's the stats in the first half. The first downs are even, as you see. The yards rushing South Carolina did rush for 60 yards. But pitch 31. A total yard, 66 to 79. But the most important statistic is on the scoreboard up there. 10 points for Pittsburgh, zero for South Carolina. Early second quarter, the Panthers, second down and three at the 31-yard line. McMillan fights his way for what should be a first down. Chuck Allen, 74, made the stop. McMillan, fine running back. Jackie Sherrill thinks that he will go very high in the draft. Well, Al, he runs a 4-5-40, and he's 6 one Now, he doesn't look that big. He did the, uh, the Pitt-Penn State game uh, a few weeks ago. Didn't realize that he was that large. 226 is a pretty good load, and he's very quick. And the Panthers have a first down. Pitt at the South Carolina 27-yard line. The Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers. Let's go, D. Come on, let's go. Club trying to get it together early. Shaky beginning. First down from the 27. From the power eye. Trocano keeping inside the 25 and gets to the 21 where he picks up six. Phil Ellis, number 80, making the tackle. That's the one dimension Tricano can give Pitt that Marino can't. Marino, perhaps the better pure passer, but when Tricano's in there, you got to watch for the run. Oh, he's a great runner. And on top of that, he played three years at free, uh, three games at free safety. Hey, you got to come up and tackle people. He's tough, physically tough. Second down, four from the 21 yard line. McMillan and Hawkins, the running backs. Tricano, a short drop, again protected well, but picked off at the five-yard line by Troy Thomas. Thomas, out past the 10, to the 15, to the 19-yard line. Oh, they needed that badly. Oh, did they you. ever. They've had two core punts, two turnovers, and Pittsburgh was driving again. They needed a turnover like that because you've got to play a near perfect game to play a team like Pittsburgh. And they get the break from the freshman from Valdosta, Georgia, Troy Thomas, number 29. Here it is again. The count throws the football. Thomas steps in, makes a big play. He was covered well. The pass was intended for Collier. Ball at the 19-yard line, first down, South Carolina. Rogers, out past the 20, picks up five. Ricky Jackson, number 87, making the tackle. I tell you, about 90% of the time, Rogers comes out the other end. He is really a punishing runner. There they are again without a huddle, but they're making the substitution. So that enables Pitt to regroup and set up its defense. Second down and five. With Gillespie in motion, they pitch it to Rogers again. And Rogers backs his way out to the 27 yard line. The Pitt Panthers capitalizing early. If you picked us up late, George Rogers fumbled on the very first play from scrimmage tonight. Pitt able to cash in, going for the touchdown, adding a field goal late first quarter. Lead 10 0, but South Carolina trying to capitalize on an interception, have it third down and two from their own 27 yard line. 
Rodgers looks for the first down, has it, and more. Out to the 35, Tom Flynn takes the stop. They're using the faster no huddle. Here it is, the replay again. You see Rodgers gets good blocking at the line of scrimmage. Number 39 is lead blocker Carl West pops through there. But this no huddle is forcing Pittsburgh to stay in one defense, and they can't make adjustments. Now they've got Rodgers out and Reeves in at tailback, number 31 on first down from the 35-yard line, and Harper to put it up. Harper throwing into a crowd and complete after the 50-yard line to Ben Cornett, the tight end. Great catch by Cornett. He was hit right there, and a great throw by Harper. Because this doesn't happen to be the long suit. Here they are again. They have forced Pittsburgh. You see, Pittsburgh is in one defense, and they can't adjust. And here is South Carolina ready to go. Quickly at the 49-yard line, first and 10. He's audibleizing now at the line. Broken play, but Harper turns it into a gain as he gets into pit territory to the 46-yard line. Percy Reeves, the man I think he was intending to give the ball to, slipped. He did. He started to come out of his eye-back spot. That's exactly right, Al. He slipped and he couldn't get the ball, couldn't get any traction there. Rodgers getting a breather here with Reeves a tailback, second down and six. Gillespie in motion, pitch it to Reeves. Percy tries to cut inside and slips down again. Just about gets back to the line of scrimmage. He's cut down there by Jerry Boyarski, number 68. So South there Carolina again, again he, without the huddle. They're in one formation. Of course, he audibleizes. He looks at the defense. He's running away from the strong safety, Carlton Williams. He reads him, then he goes away from him. Here he audibleized to a pass. Third and seven, a deep drop and some pressure, and he throws to the 35-yard line and complete for a first down to Willie Scott. Here he fights his way out. Here he is, 6'5", 250, Willie Scott. He breaks away from him, and the ball is there. Harper throws the ball in there. It's a little low, but Scott makes a great catch. There, they, there they go without a huddle again. All right, let's go. On a very fruitful drive, they have Rodgers back in now. They've been moving without George, but he's in again and has the ball. From the 35, he picks up five more, getting to the 30, where Ricky Jackson makes the tackle. This whole thing is unbalanced, the Pittsburgh defense. They can't get set, they can't make their calls because South Carolina is running so rapidly. They come out of one base formation, he'll audibleize at the line which sweep he wants or which pass. You see him talking here to the team. The entire drive without a huddle, second down and five. Rodgers again to the left side with some blocking. Gets to the 25-yard line, and again it's Ricky Jackson making the tackle. Close to a first down. Harlan likes it, you can see here. Because I like it, I like it. Keep it going. It is a first down for the Gamecocks, who trail 10 to nothing. But on this drive without a huddle, South Carolina moving seemingly at will against the best defensive team in the country and the number one team against the rush. But now Carolina's going to take a timeout as they move the ball to the pit 25-yard line. Rodgers is walking off. We'll get a report on George when we come back with 8.22 to go in the half. I don't know what's tougher. My job or this new Chevy pickup. Hauls a lot of payload. Helps smooth out those country roads. And you can't buy a V8-powered car or truck with better gas mileage ratings. But after a long, hard day... Hey, cowboy. This dude's ready to play. And I play just as hard as I work. Chevy pickup, full riding tough. Chevy trucks, built tough, built for economy. Baby me, baby. Baby me, baby. Mr. To Baby Your Baby, your skin's gotta be smooth. Rise Baby Face Shave Cream, the only lather with our exclusive baby oil formula. Rise Baby Face babies your face, so it doesn't just shave you close. It leaves your skin feeling smooth up close. Baby me, baby. Rise baby face with baby oil. Shave so close your face feels smooth up close. Baby me. Baby. January 10th, on the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Hula Bowl. And on the 17th, the hilarious Globetrotters hit Hollywood. Moments of excellence coming up on ABC's Wide World of Sports. George Rogers has been sidelined on this drive. He was the man that called that last South Carolina timeout. Injury appears to be to his left wrist or forearm. He's on the bench, and they have Todd Berry in, the freshman, 
at tailback, number 34 on first down, Carolina at the pitch 25 yard line. Wright, the fullback, decked after a gain of two. And could have changed the whole momentum in this drive also because they really had Pittsburgh uh, off balance, was moving the ball well, or continuing on with a no huddle offense. That's Sal Sinceri. Having trouble getting up, the linebacker, number 66, senior from Pittsburgh, who was in on the stop, making the tackle on right. He goes out and replaced by Mark Reichard, number 50. Here's Sanceri right here. Keep in mind that the South Carolina team has gone against some great teams this fall. So, uh, Southern California, Georgia, Michigan, they played some pretty classy teams. Beat Michigan in Ann Arbor. That's just before Bowl got everything figured out up there. <laughs> That's right. But they came on and had a great, great second half of their season, particularly defensively. Second down and eight. Carolina at the Panthers' 23-yard line. Harper throwing to Scott, the tight end. Pushed back to the 23-yard line, so it's a minimal game. And it will be third down, call it seven. And they, well, they're going to call, uh, they're going back to the huddle this time. It's too important to play. At, uh, the injury to Rodgers, I think, really changed the, the momentum here a little bit. It actually called a timeout. So George continues to get attention, and South Carolina has used another timeout, so they've used two of their three on this drive. 7.17 to go, first half, pick 10, I'm South Carolina nice. nothing. My best shot in years, and nobody noticed. Because they can't see you anymore. Pretty Brent, 5 feet 8, 180 pounds. 175. <laughs> Come with us. Where? Why? Where you won't worry about your game. Or anything else. You mean it? Oh, no. I, I just bought a house. Yeah, my kid wants to be a, a doctor. I gotta rotate my tires. Ah, uh, but you do have prudential life insurance, Freddie. Oh. That'll help take care of things. My piece of the rock, oh yeah. First I figured I was young, healthy. Really? Yeah, and couldn't afford it. Then my prudential agent showed me how I could. <laughs> oh. Prudential's special policy for growing families lets you start off with lower premiums. So now you can afford what you can't afford to be without. A piece of the rock. I could get another piece of the rock tomorrow. There are no more tomorrows. For life, health, auto, home. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential Insurance. Two weeks from tonight, meet the men and women of Blake Carrington's dynasty. Just had a chance to survey George Rogers' wrist, what it is. It's a chronic injury to his left wrist. They just rewrap it, untape it, then rewrap it, give him a little, bit, a little bit more flexibility in that left wrist, carry the football. Al. All right, Steve, thank you. As uh, Rogers. Happy to report the injury of no major consequence, and there he is back in the lineup. So George will operate from his familiar tailback spot on third down and seven. South Carolina at the pit 22-yard line. Harper going for the end zone for Scott. Incomplete, and where's the flag? We don't see any. There's no flag on what appeared to be with a naked eye blatant interference by Carlton Williamson, but it no did. flag. It looks like he definitely makes contact before the ball gets there. This is number 48, Carlton Williamson, the strong safety. Running here with 6'5", 250, Scott, Willie Scott. Now watch here, the contact in the rear, right there. There's no question the right hand is on Scott, and the ball is not even there. The official missed it. A very big break for Pittsburgh. Eddie Leppard comes in to attempt a field goal from the 29-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard attempt. Leppard did not miss a kick this season, either a field goal or an extra point. Flags are down, two of them. The kick is good, but let's see about the penalty. I think it was Pittsburgh offside, and I think they'll refuse it. Well, it was fourth down and seven. Offside is the call. So do you want the three points, or do you want fourth and two and maybe go for it? No, no, you take the three. Now I got to think Absolutely. at this point, it's too early. Sure. Oh, yeah. I did that Offside. once. 
White declined. You took the penalty one yeah, time? I, I took the penalty. Points. We turned around and fumbled on the first play. <laughs> Terrific. At the two-yard line. And you went into the Hall of Fame, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> so Eddie Leppard puts three up on the board, and here again, the disputed play was Scott. Well, I tell you, that in my mind, there's no question that there was contact made by Carlton Williamson before the ball got there. As you see, number 48 on Scott, number 47. Now watch the ball and watch the right hand. The official has a good view. Watch the right hand in contact right there. And watch Scott fall. You see right there, there's no question. But he missed it. And the end result is instead of a touchdown, it is a field goal. They get the field goal on a drive that started after the interception by the freshman defensive back, Thomas. Back deep, Hawkins for Pittsburgh. Artrell standing at the goal line. John Tanner does the kicking off. It's interesting. Tanner, they feel, is a better kickoff man than Leopard, who did not miss a place kick all season long. Tanner with a good kick. Couple of yards deep. Hawkins coming straight out with it to the 10. Artrell to the 15, the 20. Has some room to the 30-yard line. And ridden down at the 41. Gary Berger making the tackle. But Hawkins has put Pittsburgh near midfield. Let's watch the left hand. I may be an error here whether it is the right or the left. The right comes out. And then the left hand, yes, the left hand here hits his ankle and trips him up. <laughs> In any event, it was interference. <laughs> but no flag. no flag. So it's first down. Pittsburgh from the 41-yard line. And Dan Marino has come in at quarterback, number 13. They've been going with Tricano, but now Marino is at the helm. McMillan takes it out to the 46-yard line. Once again, let's go back and see exactly what you're talking about. The left hand this time. Keep an yep. eye on it. Watch the left hand of Carlton Williamson, number 48, and see whether or not it's that hand that trips up Scott. His left leg right there. Now there's contact there. On second down, it's McMillan. Out to the 50-yard line where Walt Cater, number 59, makes the tackle and it will be third down and one i'm wondering whether or not jackie sherrill is uh, taking trocano out because he threw that interception uh, and put marino in or whether or not he's just splitting the time uh, because trocano was having a good night up until the time that he threw that uh, interception marino remember had been a starting quarterback was injured missed three full games came back played in the last two though trocano did start on third and one a strange call on a roll and the pass Complete to the 43-yard line to Benji Pryor. Boy, that was, he took some risk there, I'll tell you, and he got it there for the first down. They had pressure on Marino. They had the coverage. Here it is. They fake a run action. Good call on third and short. He comes for, goes for the big play. Now he can't find anybody. He's getting heat there from number 80, Phil Ellis, and he gets it to Benji Pryor, uh, the leading receiver on this football team, finally brought down by Pat Bowen. First down, Panthers at the South Carolina 43-yard line. Marino, again, the fantastic protection. Rose has all the time in the world to the 35-yard line. Complete there to Willie Collier. What a job by that offensive front for Pittsburgh. Isn't that the truth? He had all day to throw the ball. There's no way a secondary can stay back there against a good passer and expect to do any covering. He had just too much time. Great job on the offensive line. Dombrowski comes in with a play. The tight end. It's second down and one. Panthers at the 35-yard line. Marino missing three full games. Still compiling those numbers for the season. And they give it to McMillan. Looking for room to the outside. Gets down to the 30. And it's a Panther first down. With four minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first half. Ed Baxley and Harry Skipper coming up to make the stop. Report from the bench. There's no problem at all with Tricano as far as an injury is concerned. Jackie Sherrill just contending that Marino is in there right now for a change of pace, if nothing else. And they said yesterday that Marino was really throwing well. Both of them were throwing well. They've had great practices here. On first and ten, it's McMillan who gets to the 24-yard line. Chuck Allen 
making the tackle. Jackie Sherrill concluding his fourth season at Pitt. Remember, he took over following Major's departure for Tennessee after Johnny had guided Pitt to the national championship in 1976, the year Tony Dorsett won the Heisman. Flag is down on that last play. Sherrill is going to have another penalty assessed against the Panthers, and Jackie's getting very hot. Look at that record, 38 and 8. Illegal procedure. Again, too, too many minutes. Too many men in the backfield that time again. Must be pretty thin in there because it's difficult to see. So it's the second time Pitt has been penalized for that same infraction. It's first and 15 as Marino drops back again, rolling, and before he gets blindsided, has Dombrowski complete to the 14-yard line. Again, when you get that much time, somebody's going to eventually get open. Tricano does not want to run. His knee is not uh, fully healed. He doesn't want to scramble. He just kind of rolled out semi to his left that time. And, of course, threw the football. He got pressure that time from Province, number 70. Uh, but he got away from him, and he just, you're right, Al. Gosh, he's getting an awful lot of time. Marino, perfect thus far on this drive. Three out of three. Has guided Pitt to the 14. Panthers leading 10-3. 3.41 to go in the half. Artrell Hawkins cuts back the other way and gets to the eight-yard line. Picking up six, it'll be second down and four. Phil Ellis, 80, making the stop, along with Harry Skipper, 26. Hawkins coming into this game had only carried the ball 45 times for 123 yards. And in a way, a surprise started tonight because they have been going with Joe McCall. McCall is not injured, but Jackie Sherrill electing instead to go tonight with Artrell Hawkins as the second running back to complement McMillan. Three minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first half of the Gator Bowl from Jacksonville. Hit 10 and South Carolina 3. Foreign oil. We know the consequences. This day on ABC, Notre Dame sets their sights on upsetting Georgia as Herschel Walker leads the number one team in the country towards a possible national championship. The Sugar Bowl live on ABC. The Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Al Michaels with Ara Parsigian, Steve Davis, the Pitt Panthers on top 10-3 to and threatening again as they're at the South Carolina 8-yard line. Second down, 4. for this drive. Sends Hawkins in motion and gives the ball to McMillan who gets to the five-yard line. Randy shy of the first down. It'll be third and one. Hal Henderson, number 81, made the stop for the Gamecocks. Two minutes, 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Third down and that much, about a yard and a half. Just outside the five. And a first down for Randy McMillan. Ed Baxley making the tackle. What appears to be a first down. We'll wait officially to lay on pile with 237. Remaining in the first half. Maybe not now. It looked like McMillan had sneaked forward enough to pick it up. But they're going to spot it, as you can see, at about the four and a half. Yeah, I thought too. Bring it in. Yeah, it looked like he like, had it. Yeah, Literally. like you. I thought he had uh, thrust uh, maybe a yard past the... They have it anyway. Nope. No, I didn't get it. Fourth and an inch. Or two or three. And they're going to go for it. Wayne D. Bartola comes in at fullback. Number 31, making his first appearance. The split back this time. It's Marino himself lunging forward and should have it. Yeah, I think he's got plenty of forward progress. Marino on a keeper. They only needed three or four inches. And he has it by plenty. But the Gamecocks are hanging tough in there. Remember, South Carolina very tough, as Georgia found out, to move against down deep. 
Yeah, they put on several great goal line stands. Well, they need one here because we've got 228 to go in the half. Pitt leading by a touchdown. First and goal from just inside the four. Marino throwing touchdown. Willie Collier, number four. Boy, they really mix their plays up well. They really did. They weren't going to take any chances. They had watched that film of the Georgia game, I'm sure. The tenacity of the South Carolina defense. They went right to the air. Well executed play to Collier and a touchdown. Here it is again. Just a quick loft ball into the corner. Collier's there. Bridges is behind him and uh, unable to cover. Dave Trout attempting the extra point out of the hold of Dan Daniels. And Trout's kick is good. I so the that... Panthers with Marino leading the charge this time. Down the field, Danny completed four out of four for 39 yards on the drive. And I think Mark Bridges on that touchdown back there was looking for Collier to, to cut. He was looking for a move, and already Marino had put the ball up in the air, and he didn't know where it was and couldn't recover quick enough. Here it is right here. He just steps right back and lost the ball right here. And I think Bridges was looking for him to cut. And he's behind him, and he can't get back to get there when the ball is there. The Panthers on top, 17-3. to Willie Collier scoring the touchdown. Senior. Recruited Collier from Georgia. Interestingly, a number of the Panthers from the Georgia-Florida area coming up at halftime. Interviews with both coaches. Chevrolet Coaches of the Year Award. Take a look at both fans and review the highlights of the first half. Hit on top. The numbers on the scoring drive. After Tricano had played to that point, Danny Marino is coming in and driving them downfield in five minutes. The kick angled toward the six-yard line. After the 10 is Carl West. Flag is thrown as West comes out to the 27-yard line, but a marker down back at the 15. And a clip will be assessed against South Carolina. Dominique Glasson game, number 35, was the guilty party. Well, South Carolina certainly doesn't need to make an error down here. There's 158 left. They're behind by 14 points. And I wouldn't think they'll take too many big risks down here. It's not the type of team that has an offense that can really take a lot of risks in this situation. That's exactly right. Al, well, they just did not a catch up. Clipping on the red team on the run back. First down. First down and seven. Watch the left upper part of your screen and see if you can pick up the clip. Number 35 right there. Definitely on. Yes, exactly. Right there, without question, a good call by the official. Dominique Glasson game. So first down from the seven-yard line. And George Rogers is stacked up in the middle. It looked like Boyarski was in there, number 68, and Meisner. If South Carolina thought about launching a drive here, too, keep in mind they had to use two of their three timeouts on that earlier drive, as a consequence they have only one. What we might see instead is if they can limit South Carolina to a yard or two on this next play, you might see Pitt take a defensive timeout with a minute 30 to go in the half. Exactly. Put that ball back in good field position with the passing attack they have. Second down and nine. Rodgers on a sweep. George gets it out to the 11-yard line. It will be third down and six. You Green in on the play, number 99, along with Jerry Boyarski. I think this would be an excellent time to call timeout. You stop think? that clock with 1.04 left. They've got two timeouts left. But the Panthers not stopping it, and the clock running down. 52, 51, 50 seconds remaining in the half. Third down and six from the 11. Gillespie in motion. Rodgers again to the 20 and out to the 24-yard line. Ricky Jackson made the stop, so I guess Cheryl knew exactly what he was doing. When you've got Rodgers on the other side of the line, maybe you shouldn't take a time out, huh? That's exactly right. In this particular case, look at this hole. And watch Rodgers go through there and really launch his body. 
he really just gives everything. You've got to be careful. He's just liable to pop out of there when you least expect it, and certainly South Carolina needs it. George with 94 yards in the first half. Shade under five yards of carry. This should be the final play of the half from the 23-yard line. Instead, Harper's going to go deep, launching a bomb, and incomplete and nearly intercepted, and a flag is thrown at the 45-yard line. Flynn back deep for Pittsburgh. Horace Smith was the intended receiver. Pass and a interference on the defense. First down. Interference. I think they threw the flag on Terry White, 23. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Horace Smith, number 44. Terry White, 23. Oh, he takes a pretty good shot at him right here. That elbow right in the face. Let's see if he does anything else here. Now, there goes the flag right there. The official caught it. 11 seconds. So 11 seconds remaining in the half. South Carolina moving out from deep in its own territory. And time now still for a player two from the 45-yard line. Up they come in their basic formation. Harper going over the middle to Scott. Inside the 30, inside the 20, inside the 10, and he gets to the one wide line, but there's no time remaining. The clock has expired. Unbelievable play. <laughs> what a play. Willie Scott almost had a touchdown, and what a difference that would have made, but time has run out. So Scott gets all the way to the one with a great second and third effort, and the half is over with a score 17 to 3 Pittsburgh let's go down to Steve Davis with Jackie Sherrill Good Sherrill those Gamecocks don't quit I don't think anybody's going to quit in this game it's awful lot of riding on it I was very impressed with the way they're hanging in there moving the ball they come with a no huddle offense and it's forcing us to stay in one defense so naturally they're running a sweep for all of the line of scrimmage and they've done a great job of they've had a whole month to prepare for us and they've done a great job in knowing what we're going to be in. Coach is a 14 point lead say everything stayed the same and the ifs happened Georgia got beat Florida State got beat is a 14 point lead enough to make everybody remember Sunday when the votes well, go in. I'm not worried about that I hope we can keep a 14 point lead because the game is certainly going to be a different thing the next next quarter because they get the ball at the start of the third quarter the first five minutes going to make a big difference in the, in the game. Thank you coach. All right, Steve. Back up down. All right Steve so the half ending on a most dramatic note South Carolina looking like they were simply content to run out the clock and almost wind up with seven. Great play here by Scott Harper hits him and watch the running. He really he really runs with authority there is one tackler there then I think it's Flynn misses him. Now he's going Terry White finally. No it's number three it's Lynn Thomas finally gets him down before he gets into the end zone. Here's an isolation on him. He comes off the line of scrimmage here. Just 11 seconds to go in the half. Now you take these two things. There was interference on Scott on one other occasion and here he just misses a score. Right there he shakes off number 23 Terry White. And look at him run 250. A score here would have been really something for the South Carolina Gamecocks, but unfortunately they're just short, and the score is 17 to 3 instead of 17 to 10. So the Pitt Panthers up on top by 14. We'll be back with tonight's halftime activities after this commercial message and a word from our local station. Back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. An eventful first half that finds the Pittsburgh Panthers in quest of a possible national championship, third ranked in the country coming in, leading South Carolina by a score of 17 to 3. And the crowd of better than 70,000 at the Gator Bowl being entertained now by the University of Pittsburgh Band. This rendition, the devil went down to Georgia.
addition of Donald E. Howard. Entertaining the capacity crowd at the Gator Bowl. Halftime score, Pittsburgh 17, South Carolina 3. End of the college football season, of course, all kinds of awards, and we have some special presentations to make. To begin the second half, Dave Trout kicking off for the Panthers. He got that ice off that leg. Had that ice back on his left leg earlier. Discussing it with Steve Davis, nothing major. And away we go in the second half, and he booms this one. Deep in the end zone, Horace Smith downing it there, and Carolina coming out at the 20-yard line. Gary Harper, the quarterback, with George Rogers and Johnny Wright, the running backs. Gillespie and Smith alternate. They're the messengers at the flanker spot. Gillespie, 45, and Smith, 44. The two men up front, and of course, Willie Scott, number 47, coming up just short of picking up what would have been a very big touchdown at the end of the first half. First down, South Carolina from their own 20-yard line. They begin the second half with Rodgers, who slips down at the 18-yard line. The Panther defense, there he is, Hugh Green, runner-up for the Heisman. Greg Meisner, number 86, occasionally eats worms, they tell us. Jerry Boyarski, number 68, the middle guard. Bill Neal is a good one, number 76. And Ricky Jackson doesn't get a whole lot of publicity because of Green, but had a good first half. Second down, 12 from the 18. Rodgers. Out past the 20 to the 24-yard line, where it'll be third and six, and Ricky Jackson there for the stop. There's Sinceri, who was shaken up in the first half, one linebacker, and Fidel plays the other side. The secondary with Terry White, the cornerback, number 23. Lynn Thomas saved the touchdown with that tackle on Scott. Carlton Williamson, an exceptional strong safety, and Tom Flynn at the free safety spot. Third down, seven from the 23 as Harper retreats. Coming to the near side and nearly has it picked off by Fidel, number 58. If Steve gets that one, Pitt has another six. Ben Cornett was the intended Pass receiver. Man-to-man -man coverage on that time and a good rush. Had to get Harper had to get rid of the ball quickly, and Fidel almost picked that off. So South Carolina to kick. It's Chris Norman, who, as you can see, has met with non-success tonight. A 21 and a 28-yard effort on his two tries. This one is a low kick, his best distance of the night. Fielded at the 35 by Dawkins, who's off balance, and all the way back to the 20, tries to pick up some blocking, and returns it on to the 27. Donnie McDaniel made the stop, but Dawkins got caught going the other way after a 42-yard kick. <laughs> got his momentum going the wrong way that time, but he lost about 10 yards before he could regain it. Roy Regals lives. <laughs> the pit backfield and receivers with Tricano. McCall did not play in the first half. We saw a lot of Archwell Hawkins. Collins and Collier, the wide receivers. The men up front, Benji Fryer anchoring it. And of course, that is the group that has protected both Tricano and Marino so well. And it's Tricano who gets the call at the start of the second half. First down from the 27 yard line. The fake to Hawkins. Tricano on a roll and throwing. Out to the 41-yard line, but incomplete, intended for Benji Pryor. Take a look at South Carolina now. They've got Phil Ellis up front, number 80, a sophomore. Andrew Province is a good one. He comes from Savannah, Georgia. Emmanuel Weaver, good first half. Had him isolated from time to time. Chuck Allen has started every game the past two years. Hal Henderson, 6'2", 210. Second down, 10. Panthers from their own 27-yard line. This time he's pressured. Runs out of the pocket, has some room, out past the 25, the 30, and all the way out to the 38-yard line. And a first down as Emmanuel Weaver ran him down. Good so, scramble. You know, Emmanuel Weaver was a, it was a tight end. This was a tight end in junior college, moved to the nose man. You see Grimm is blocking him here. Finally throws him off. Starts to the right where Tricano was. Now he starts pursuing as Tricano scrambles clear to his right. Look at this speed coming down. This is a tight end. Kind of neckties him here. Gives him the clothesline right here. You gotta be careful with that, but he makes a great, great job of pursuing. 
First down, Panthers from the 38-yard line. Off the play fake, it's Stracano with time. Throwing, deflected, and intercepted at the 37-yard line by Harry Skipper. So there's the turnover that Carlin is looking for, coming early here in the second half. Skipper picking it off on a deflected pass. Troy Thomas initially was the man who got his hand on it. Way to go, boy! It's a key turnover because Tricano was moving the football team. It was a deflection and a great recovery by Harry Skipper. 13-18 so to play, third quarter. Gamecocks have the ball. They trail by 4-2. South Carolina has the ball after the Harry Skipper interception at their own 40-yard line. First and 10. Pittsburgh leading 17-3 early in the third quarter. Johnny Wright picks up about three. Let's go back and take a look at the interception again. Tricano faking the run action pass. Throws to the crossing end. There the ball is deflected by, I believe it's number 25, Bowen. And then picked off by Harry Skipper, number 26. Deflected twice. Also, Troy Thomas got a hand on it. Thomas also got a piece of that. The ball was bouncing around. It finally wound up in the Gamecocks' hands. Second down, seven. Harper, under pressure and incomplete. Nobody in the area. Carlton Williamson was the man who put the pressure on and got a piece of the ball on the release. It'll be third down and seven. It's isolated on U Green, 99. Pass attempt by Harper. Here he is deflecting Scott, number 47. Now here he comes as a delayed rusher. He puts on a real rusher. I think that's Rogers are trying to yep. block him. Rogers and Green. Great. Third down, seven. Jackie Sherrill, coach of the third ranked Pitt Panthers, 10 and 1 coming in. The only loss to Florida State, currently ranked second. Third and seven from the 43. Gillespie in motion on a sweep to Rogers. George to the 45, but wrestled down by Green at the 47-yard line. So the one and two and the Heisman right there together, and he's shy of the first down. That's a good example of the Pittsburgh speed. Boy, they really ran with him. The whole Pittsburgh defense ran with that sweep. So all those shirts coming right with Rogers. Fourth down. Two and a half. Chris Norman to do the kicking. Got off a 42-yard effort on his last group. Julius Dawkins back deep for the Panthers inside his own 15-yard line. Norman with a high kick, not much distance. Fielded up at the 26-yard line by Tom Flynn, and he's dropped out of the 31. Tonight, 72,297, eclipsing the old mark by eight at the Gator Bowl. The old mark set in 77 when the Panthers came in, beat Clemson handily, and Matt Cavanaugh now, of course, with the New England Patriots threw four touchdown passes that night. Well, this is well attended, and they really support their teams. 26-yard kick by Norman. So the Panthers are not pinned deep. Instead, they're out at their 31-yard line, first and 10. McMillan, 35 to 40, and Randy to the 45-yard line gets 14, where Chuck Finney makes the stop. Chuck Finney seeing a lot of action here, filling in for Harry Skipper, who's been moved over to uh, free safety to replace Durant. First down, Panthers. Tricano, the quarterback. Marino is in for one drive. Let him do a score. McMillan to the 50 and to the Gamecock 48-yard line. Well, you can see what's happening off of that formation, a double wide out, double wing wide, I should say, with two tight ends. Tricano reads the defense. South Carolina, after talking at half, I'm sure, is deploying now to defend the pass, and Tricano is audibleizing, running the draw play, slipping to beat McMillan to the inside until they come back up again, and when they come back up to defend the run, he's going to go to the air again. Second down, a long two from the South Carolina 48. Slot prior to the left. Tricano on a roll. He's got leverage. Burkeet 
inside the 40 and to the 36 yard line and a first down Ed Baxley number 50 catches up with him there. That was a great uh, piece of blocking. Here's Baxley number 50 the linebacker. A very quick 6 2 2 25 running with the play because Tricano had really the corner it was well blocked and it was only after he picked up a lot of yardage that Baxley got there. Benji Pryor threw a great block. First and ten. The Panthers at the 36 yard line. Dombrowski in the slot to the right. And they give it to McMillan. Pickup of about four. It'll be second and six. Walt Cater makes the stop. This program, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. You're watching WTAE TV Channel 4 in Pittsburgh. One of the big stories tonight, punting. South Carolina unable to capitalize, averaging only 33 and a half yards a kick. Three poor punts and one decent punt by Norman. Second down, six. It came with a pass defense. Tricano, all kinds of time again. Mm. Tipped and this time caught inside the 15 by Collins, who gets to the 10. <laughs> so another volleyball play, but this time it's Pittsburgh that takes advantage. Benji Pryor was the first man to get his hands on it. Great hand reaction here by Dwight Collins. A freshman who's run for 770 yards with receptions. Look at here. He tips it with his left hand, comes back down, grabs it again. And now here we take a look at Weaver again on the pass protection. You see here Grimm and Feta doing the job this time on Emmanuel Weaver, who cannot even come close to getting to Tricano. He's just frustrated now. First down, Pittsburgh at the South Carolina 11 yard line. McMillan to the outside and can't turn the corner. Wrestled down by Mark Bridges coming up from the corner. Good fast support by Bridges. Came right up and shut that play off. I'll tell you the formation distortion that uh, see we got an injury here. This Henderson. Is Henderson going out. But uh, Pittsburgh is giving South Carolina a lot of different defenses or offensive formations which creates defensive coverage problems for them. And they're audibleizing at the line based on the alignment. They're doing an excellent job. Hal Henderson, the defensive end, limping off. Paul Williams in in place of him at second down. And flags go down again before the snap. Interior movement in the line, yep. I believe. Yeah. Illegal procedure, the call. Then another five yard penalty assessed against Pittsburgh. Panthers were penalized six times for a total of 48 yards in the first half. But the penalties have come in the crucial field position area. Yep. Illegal procedure. The line lifted. Yep. Offensive line picked their hands up off the ground prior to the snap. So second down, 17. <laughs> Carolina now with five defensive backs. <laughs> As Tricano barks the signals from the 18-yard line. <laughs> Rick pressure this time. And incomplete. It was Phil Ellis who put the pressure on. No one picked him up at all that time. One of the few times that they've been able to get to Tricano, they didn't sack him, but certainly he made contact with him and destroyed the pass effort. But no one picked him up. Ellis came free from the left defensive end. Watch him right here at the top of the screen as he puts pressure on. Mark May, number 73, picks up the tackle. Nobody there to pick up Ellis, and he destroys the pass attempt. So third down and 17. Pittsburgh at the South Carolina 18-yard line. Eight minutes, 39 seconds to go third quarter. Pitt leading 17-3. Tricano. Out of the pocket he comes. Hits Dombrowski at the 15. And he bowls forward down to the nine-yard line. Chuck Finney makes a stop. But it will be fourth down and eight. And so Dave Trout will come in to try to tack on three more. He kind of used good judgment that time. He did not have anybody open deep. He had three receivers down there. And he just dumped the ball off to uh, Dombrowski. And at least he did not uh, avoid getting a field goal attempt. 
Trout and an angle to the left. Ball will be spotted by Dan Daniels at the 16, a 26-yard kick. And Trout puts it through. So he's two of two field goal attempts tonight, two of two extra points, eight minutes exactly to go in the third, 20 to three Panthers. The Pitt Panthers on top. 20 to 3 with eight minutes remaining in the third quarter of the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. And Pitt to kick off back deep. Horace Smith, the man in the middle, flanked by Percy Reeves at the top. Carl West on the bottom. Dave Trout to kick off for the Panthers. To the near side to West from the one. Carl out to the 10, the 15, and dropped at the 21 yard line. First down for South Carolina. And a very tough situation for a team that really lives and dies with its running game. They have to go to the air now with under eight minutes to play in the third quarter. Trailing by 17. Yeah, it's very tough for a running team when they fall behind. This is what happened to South Carolina in the Clemson game. A couple interceptions and a great uh, drives by Clemson. They fell behind, could not play catch up. Gary Harper, he's been in all the way at quarterback, going right to the air. On a roll to the left, he's under pressure, looking for Scott out of the 33-yard line. And makes the catch there in a lot of traffic. He was blanketed by Steve Fidel. And they're coming with a no huddle. Here's another look at it. Harper does a nice job here, and also Scott, he takes the ball right off the turf. It's a low throw. He makes a nice catch there. So without a huddle, at the 33-yard line, first and 10 Carolina. George Rogers, a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. South Carolina very effectively utilized a second quarter drive in which they did not huddle, and they're doing it again here as Carolina trailing by 17. Working against the Pitt Panthers, still very much with national championship aspirations. On second and seven, Harper on a deep drop, throwing, tipped, and intercepted out of the 49-yard line by Steve Fidel. He's to the 45, and back he comes to the 40. So the running team has to go to the air, and on a pass intended for Gillespie, Pitt is in business again. But you certainly can't fault Gary Harper. He did a nice job. He threw the ball right in there, went right through Gillespie's hands. Watch this. And Fidel picks it off with good hand reaction. Right there, Gillespie's got it. It's out of his hands. Look at Fidel come back and do a nice job of fielding the ball. And uh, for a linebacker, runs it well. The Pitt Panthers at the 41-yard line, first and 10. There he is, Steve Fidel. Intercepting the pass, setting Pitt up in good position as Benji Pryor moves to the right side of the line, the tight end. And it's Archell Hawkins getting to the 40. Again, if you join us late, the Panthers ranked third in the country. If they win tonight, if Notre Dame can beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl on Thursday, and if Oklahoma can beat Florida State in the Orange Bowl, and Oklahoma is favored to do so on Thursday, then in all probability, it would be Pittsburgh winding up on top. And certainly they have done nothing tonight thus far to diminish their chances. And they've played very well. Second down and 10 from the 41. Trocano, he's not going to be conservative with the 17-point lead. Has a man wide open. It's Collins inside the 25, and he gets to the 23. The freshman from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Joe Namath's hometown. Having a couple of words here with Walt Cater, the linebacker, 59. Collins is, is a former running back. Finally was moved over to the wide out because uh, Pittsburgh lost their two uh, split receivers in their first ball game. Collins was forced into the ball games from Aliquippa. You know, it's fantastic. He had 777 yards. That comes to 32.5 every time he caught it. Ten touchdowns. First and ten from the 23-yard line. Give it to McMillan who has room inside the 20, breaks a tackle, and gets to the 12-yard line. The Pitt Panthers starting to blow away the Gamecocks now as Chuck Finney made the stop. 5.43 remaining in the third. I can see great blocking. McMillan gets a good hole here. Gets good blocking. He reads it well also. Reads away from Cater, number 59. And uh, just excellent running on the part of McMillan. Panthers at the 12-yard line. They lead 20-3. 
Collier and Collins both split to the right this time. De Bartola in is the sole running back, 31. And Tricano's going to keep it. Tricano inside the five, gets to the three. Ed Baxley made the tackle. Again, confusing the South Carolina defense with their formations and change of formations. They wound up with a wing and a tight end to the same side, when the wing was actually two tight ends to that side. Tricano just took the ball from center. But good blocking with the guard pulling. Beta, and around the corner they went for positive yardage. They are a good football team. Mm. The only loss of the season at the hands of Florida State in Tallahassee on a turnover prone evening for the Panthers who take a timeout here, their first of the second half. Four minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the third quarter at Jacksonville. Pittsburgh 20, South Carolina 3. Four minutes and 39 seconds remaining. In the third quarter, Pittsburgh got top 20 to 3, and after the timeout, it's second down one at the three of Carolina. As Tricano calls the signal, sends Hawkins in motion and gives the ball to McMillan straight ahead, and McMillan is close and in for the touchdown. Randy McMillan culminating a drive that began after the interception by the linebacker Steve Fidel. Emil Boris and Mark May, the Outland Trophy winner, the best interior lineman in the country, leading away for McMillan. 26 to 3 Panthers. So the Pitt Panthers feeling somewhat snug that they were not invited to a New Year's Day game. Really turning it on tonight. Brown's extra point is good, 27 to three. I tell you, if there's ever been a great argument error for a national championship playoff, this might be the year. Well, certainly there's been so much balance in college football. Let's take a look at the touchdown. McMillan lined up deep. To get, look at the thrust and the determination, and he gets in for the score. We'll get back to that question again. I've never seen better balance in college football than we've had this year. Certainly, I've been an advocate of the national championship playoffs. Unfortunately, they've never come about. It's a very difficult thing to pull off. The bowls are traditional, and it's uh, one of those things that, uh, in the years that I coached, I used to try and try time and time again, but unfortunately, without success. You're going to have some wild arguments if Pitt wins here, if Georgia loses, Florida State loses, and Pitt will say, well, we're number one. Oklahoma will say, well, we're number one. Michigan might even say we're number one if they win the Rose Bowl. Well, there's one thing there, Al, is that both Michigan and Oklahoma does, they do have two losses. Right? And uh, I think that's significant if you're going to go, and I think uh, most of the pollsters do that. That seems to be the main criteria. The Stroud's kick in the direction of Smith, coming out from the end zone to the five. Morris to the 10. 15, and that's all. So Carolina, again, pinned deep in its own territory. Good kickoff coverage. Displayed much more by the Panthers, who have really excelled in just about every facet of the game tonight. I'll tell you, they, they're a well-balanced football team. Of course, the number one in the nation defensively is Rick Tricano, number eight. He's had a great night. Hello, Seattle it, boys, Grandma! <laughs> <laughs> well, they wanted this one. First down from the 15-yard line. And Harper dropped back at the six. Bill Neal and Calvin Williamson. Williamson, the safety, blitzing in. They went right after him with a blitz, anticipating that they're going to throw the ball, and there just was no protection. Just really ripped them. Watch here. Harper has very little time. This makes a little uh, tailback action to Rogers. Very weak fake there. Look at the pressure that he gets. There's Hugh Green, number 99, then coming from the outside, number 48, uh, Carlton Williamson, and also Bill Neal. Loss of 10, second down 20 from the six. Rogers tries to give him some breathing room, but there is Ricky Jackson, number 87, and Ricky's going to run him right out of here to the Georgia border. Well, I'll tell you, Jackson really impressed me in the, uh, the Penn State game. He just played an outstanding football game, and I think that the, with Green and Jackson and Blarski on the front line, along with, of course, Meisner and Neal, they're, they're just tremendous. 
Want to hear an interesting statistic tonight? Ricky Jackson has made 10 tackles, unassisted, four assists. That's 14 he's been in on. Hugh Green, three solos, one assist. Well, four. Had, I think he had 18 in the Penn State game. Third down, 18. Jackson and Green tied for the lead in most tackles this season. Of course, a lot of teams ran away from you. That's true. That's very true. Harper, he'll get decked, and it's Williamson again, number 48. Jackie Sherrill thinks he has six players that are going to wind up being drafted in the first two rounds in the NFL draft next spring. He might be absolutely right. Oh, that's right. I, he was high, He's high on his football team, and certainly looking at him. You look across that front line offensively, they're just incredible, and they'll be coming to the field again. You're talking about guys 280, 266, 275. Just huge, and they're well coached. He's done a great job with him. Chris Norman to kick it from his own end zone. Gets a lot of pressure. A low kick. Some confusion as to who's going to make the catch at the 35. And Troy Hill makes the catch and is able to hold on. So the Panthers are right back in business. In what has been a very one-sided third period, and again, he reverts back to that one play at the end of the first half. If Carolina scores, maybe we have a different game, but they didn't, and so with 2.10 to go in the third, it's Pitt on top, 27-3. Two minutes and 10 seconds to play in the third quarter at the Gator Bowl. The Pitt Panthers with the ball at the South Carolina 35-yard line. Pittsburgh ahead, 27-3. Rick Tricano has played the entire second half, and off the play fake, he's going to get buried, but then he finally does after it looked like he might escape. Pat Bowen coming through, number 25. Well, you see now South Carolina is willing to take some chances or behind instead of zoning off, which they have done most of the ball game. They went to man to man and blitzed him. Guessed right, Tricano was trying to throw, and they could not protect him because no one picked up the blitzer. Loss of 10. Back to the 45-yard line, second down, 20. Rooster Jones in as the tailback, and there is Jones, number two, moving ahead for three yards. Jones is an interesting story in that Pitt was really interested in recruiting Jones, number one, from the state of Mississippi four years ago. And then when Jackie Sherrill and the Pitt coaches started looking at film, they kept seeing this fella from another team in Jones's backfield. And that man was Hugh Green. <laughs> yeah, right. So Jackie said, who's this guy? We got to get him, too. It's and they Natch wound up with both of them. Was it Natchez? Yep. <laughs> Rooster's from Pascagoula. Green is from Natchez. Out of the shotgun now. On third down and 17, it's Tricano. The McMillan on the screen. Hurdles one man inside the 30, the 20, and down the sidelines he goes for six more. Randy McMillan stepping over Pat Bowen and then doing a tightrope back down the sidelines to put the Panthers up on the board again to make it 33 to 3. <laughs> the screenplay. Watch the two backs there off the shotgun switch. McMillan comes from the right side to the left. Beautifully set up screen. Watch the blockers, blockers peel back. He does a good job of avoiding Bowen there by hurtling him. And now he's home free. 4-5 in the 40, 226. Not too bad. <laughs> Dave Trout for the extra point. And he's been perfect tonight. So the Pittsburgh Panthers. Leading 34 to 3, which interestingly enough was the final score the last time the Panthers won the Gator Bowl three years ago when they beat Clemson 34 to 3. No, but this one isn't over yet. No. The Goodyear Enterprise, <laughs> high above the Gator Bowl. Captain tonight by Mike Fitzpatrick from Newport, Rhode Island. Our cameraman up there, Charlie Mitchell. Crowd of better than 72,000. And it's been relatively quiet because, as we said at the outset, because of the proximity of Columbia, South Carolina to Jacksonville vis a vis Pittsburgh, the crowd dominated by Carolina partisans, but it's been very quiet, especially in the second half, with Pitt on top 34 to 3. This, this has been an outstanding quarter, certainly, for the Panthers. The hula ball coming up 
on the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports from Honolulu on the 10th of January. The East against the West, and Green and Rogers will be together with the East. Mark Herman will be the quarterback. The West will be led by Phil Bradley, the quarterback from Missouri. Jarvis Redwine, Freeman McNeil will also be there on the 10th of January. Tara Smith fielding it in the end zone, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. So South Carolina from the top. There is McMillan. Randy closing out a fine career. It is a, as I mentioned before, a team dominated by seniors, yet they do have a number of very impressive freshmen. So next year, you can't expect the Panthers to be nearly as good as they were in 1980, but maybe another year down the line, and Jackie could be right back with them. Well, he was talking about some outstanding freshmen and sophomores that he had, as we were talking to him yesterday. And, uh, Harper finding Gillespie out at the 38-yard line, and he's tackled there, and a first down for South Carolina. Well, they're not backing off. They're putting the ball up in the air, and uh, that was a well-executed play to Gillespie by Harper. He is throwing the ball well. You can't fall him. There were a couple of very important turnovers that certainly turned the tide in this. A couple of breaks that went Pittsburgh's way. But this third quarter is unquestionably uh, one of uh, the Panthers. They've done a great job in this quarter. South Carolina at the 38-yard line. First and 10. Harper. And it's incomplete. Carlton Williamson was covering Horace Smith on the play. I think he just threw it away. He wasn't yep. open, so he just uh, used good judgment, got rid of it. Still nine seconds to go in the third period. Panthers on top by 31. So Jim Carlin, no stranger to the Gator Bowl, and he was the coach at Texas Tech, led the Red Raiders in here in 1973 to a victory over Tennessee, but a different story tonight for the sixth-year mentor. Well, he's, been years a, he's been a winner, though. Look at the career record. 101 wins, 62 losses, and he's taken over losing programs. He's done a great job. Six years at Carolina, before that at West Virginia and Texas Tech. On second and ten, going deep, and Smith was out in front of Lynn Thomas, but the pass incomplete. So it'll be third down and ten with three seconds to go in the period. Well, it was an effort. <laughs> Harper's thrown the ball better than I thought he could. He, uh, he had that ball in the air a long time. Here's a nice shot of Tricano there. Hello, all you Seattle boys. <laughs> What's he saying? Rick Tricano getting in. Uh, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Salutations right. to those in Cleveland, Seattle, blanketing the country. Quite a fella. The quarterback as a sophomore, part of his junior year. This year, he didn't want to be the backup quarterback to Marino. Started the season at free safety. Third down, 10 from the 38. Harper. And again, it's incomplete. So three straight errant passes. And the third quarter has run out. We'll go to the fourth with a score. 34 to 3, Pittsburgh. And we'll continue after this commercial message and a word from our local stations. the Gator Bowl, Al Michaels, Eric Parsegian, and Steve Davis as we begin the fourth period. Pittsburgh leading 34 to 3, and they're going to get the ball back as Carolina on fourth down will have to kick. Chris Norman takes the low snap and gets the boot away. It's another bad one, a low line drive kick, but it's juggled, and a scramble at the 26, and Carolina gets it back. So a break for Carolina on the first play of the fourth period. Tim Lewis, the man who couldn't hold on to it. Well, he probably had been better served if he hadn't uh, tried to field that ball. It's a low driving type kick. First down, Gamecocks now at the 26 of the Panthers. Pitt leading by 31, and Gordon Beckham comes in at quarterback, giving it to Rodgers, 